Here is a uh, definition question on units. And the question is, work is measured in which units? And the correct answer here is option A, work is measured in joules. So work um, is defined as force times distance and the unit for uh, work is joules. It might be a good idea to also look at the other three options. So uh, when your units is newtons, we're measuring a force. If the units are joules per second, this is measuring power. And then when I have newtons times seconds, uh, this is measuring impulse. All right, so there's a very good review question there. Let's uh, now take a look at a graphing question. And for this problem, the graph below shows the relationship between the force applied and the distance moved for a 3.5 kilogram object on a frictionless horizontal surface. Okay, so this graph is measuring the force applied. So the force is on the y-axis and the distance moved is on the uh, x-axis here. Okay, and this is for a 3.5 kilogram object on a frictionless horizontal surface. Okay, and for this particular problem, uh, it states that if the object was initially at rest, what is the kinetic energy after traveling eight meters? Okay, so there's a lot going on here. And if we want to find the kinetic energy after traveling eight, eight meters, we need to use the work energy theorem. And uh, here it is below again. We've seen this a few times in the previous videos. And uh, the work energy theorem concept is pretty much saying that energy is conserved. So the energy at the beginning equals to the energy at the end. Okay, if I go back to the problem here, um, it says that we're on a frictionless and a horizontal surface. Now, if you're on a horizontal surface, there's no vertical height, right? So if you have no vertical height, uh, that basically means there's no potential energy because potential energy is MGH, right? So there's no vertical height for this particular problem and there's no friction as well. All right, so what does that mean? If I go to my work energy theorem concept here, that means we can eliminate the potential energy and we can also eliminate um, the heat energy because there is no friction. Uh, the question also tells us that uh, the object was initially at rest. So if there's uh, no speed at the beginning, that means there's no kinetic energy at the beginning. All right, so based on our work energy uh, theorem concept, we now know that the energy at the beginning is equal to the work, and the final energy at the end is just equal to the kinetic energy final. So I'll say kinetic energy final, which represents this symbol right there. Okay, now since we need to find the kinetic energy after traveling eight meters, what we're saying here is that the kinetic energy is just equal to the work done. All right, so if we can figure out what work equals to, then we've solved for the kinetic energy for this problem after eight meters. Okay, so how do I find the work done in this particular problem? Okay, now let's go to the graph here. And I know work is equal to force times the distance. Force is measured in newtons and distance is measured in meters, okay? So I need some kind of relationship where I'm multiplying newtons by meters. And if I look at the area underneath the graph here, let me just draw a rectangle to just kind of illustrate my point here. We know uh, the uh, area for a rectangle is really the length times the width, right? But the length is measured in newtons, right? So measured in newtons and the width is measured in meters. So um, if, I want, if I want to find the uh, area underneath the curve, we know it's length times width for my rectangle and length is measured in newtons and the width is measured in meters. So what we're saying here is that the area underneath the graph is the work done. Okay, so the area underneath the graph is the work done. And so what we're gonna conclude here is that force times distance for this example is the area under the curve. Okay, now since we're traveling eight meters, uh, we're looking at this particular area right here. So the area, which is a triangle. And if I wanna find the area of a triangle, the area of a triangle is really the base times the height divided by two, okay? Um, okay, so my uh, base here is going to be 8. The height here is going to be uh, 16, right? So 8 times 16, and then we divide that by 2. So the work is equal to base times height divided by 2. And just using a little bit of math here, 16 divided by 2 is going to be 8, right? So this will be 8 times 16 divided by 2, which is 8. And 8 times 8 is going to be 64. Okay, so 64... Um, 
uh, Newton meters. That is the work done. Okay, so if I go back to my um, work energy theorem concept, what I'm just trying to say here is that the kinetic energy was equal to the work done, and that was 64. All right, so 64 uh, joules, and uh, kinetic energy is also measured um, in, in joules as well, so the units match up, and uh, that is your final answer for this particular problem. Here is another uh, practice graphing question. And for this question, we have a 24 kilogram rocket initially at rest on a frictionless horizontal surface. So we saw that language in the previous problem. And the engine is uh, ignited and the graph below shows that force versus distance traveled D for the rocket car. And we wanna find the car's speed after it has traveled 200 meters. Okay, so here's my 200 meters over here. And since we're trying to find the speed after 200 meters, we're looking for the final speed, right? Okay, uh, so for this particular problem, once again, we need to kind of set up the uh, work energy theorem. And uh, that's stated here below. So the work energy theorem states that energy is conserved. So energy at the beginning equals to the energy at the end. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the information that was given to us again. Uh, we have a frictionless horizontal surface, right? So if we have a horizontal surface, there's no potential energy because there's no height. And this means if it's frictionless, there's no H, right? And we're also uh, told that we're initially at rest. So uh, this means um, that there's no kinetic energy at the beginning because um, the initial speed is zero. Okay, so if I go, go, if I go and update my uh, work energy theorem here, there's no potential energy there's no uh, friction, so that's gone, and there's no um, kinetic energy at the beginning because uh, we know that the initial speed is equal to zero. So based on that, we can conclude that the work is equal to the, uh, the final kinetic energy, I'll say Ke final, which is this, the final kinetic energy. And what we're trying to say now is the work done is equal to the kinetic energy final, and kinetic energy is equal to one half mass times the final speed squared and we want to find the final speed here right and we also know the mass for this particular problem i believe it was uh 24 so 24 is the mass there so these are all numbers that we need to consider while we're trying to solve for this particular problem here okay so just like in the previous question here um we know work is equal to force times distance Right, and we're looking at the units here, newtons and uh, meters. So uh, in the previous question, I explained that uh, the area underneath the graph, uh, because we're, we're, we're taking our newtons and we're multiplying it by our meters there, um, the area underneath the graph is equal to the work. So this is the area under the graph. And please look at the, the previous uh, question uh, for my explanation when I use a rectangle to uh, kind of multiply the units out. And since we're talking about the area underneath the graph, uh, since we travel 200 meters, uh, we're looking at this entire area right here. So this whole area right here represents the work done. Okay, so that is going to be, um, you know, base times height divided by 2. Okay, so the base is going to be 200. The distance is going to be, um, sorry, the distance is 200 and the force here is going to be 320. And then we're going to divide that by 2. Okay, so uh, we've got to do a little bit of math here and figure out what this is going to be. Um, if I just take my 200 and divide it by 2, uh, I, guess, I guess that's going to be uh, 100. And then I can multiply that by uh, 320. And then if I multiply that out, I get 32,000 joules. Okay, so that's the work done for this particular problem because that's the area underneath the graph. Okay, let's go back to the work energy concept here and work done is 32,000 uh, joules and that's equal to one half. And uh, the mass for uh, this particular problem was 24 kilograms and then we're trying to find our final speed, right? And that's being raised to the power of two. Okay, um, a few ways you can do this. Um, you know, 24 divided by two, uh, that's going to be, uh, that's gonna be 12, so um, 12 times VF to the power of two, and that equals to 32,000 on the left-hand side. And then on both sides of the equation, I can take my 32,000, and I can divide that by 12, 
and uh, I get uh, two six 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 point six repeating, and that equals to your your final speed all to the power of two, and then we can just take the square root of both sides. Okay, and uh, once we do that, uh, your final speed, uh, we just take the square root of that. So then we go to calculator right here. Um, two, six. That's going to be roughly uh, 51. 51.6, um, I'll say 640 meters per second. Okay, so that is your final speed for this particular case.